Hello everyone, meteorologist Ted Keller with your Weather to Watch report today. It's the 8th of July, 2025, and we're watching a couple of things. First of all, who's going to get good soaking rains? There's usually always at least several areas uh, getting into summer. Sometimes it tends to dry out quite a bit in late July but into August, but not so far. I'll kind of highlight where I expect heavier rains to be falling. Also, severe weather is surprisingly active, really. Um, we had an enhanced area the other day and now we have several slight risk areas, the areas you see there in yellow, over the next several days as well, as the jet stream remains pretty active for this time of year. Let's dive into it. Our first stop here today is the severe storm potential over the next couple of days, and the honors go to the east coast here for the rest of uh, this afternoon and into the evening and overnight hours with a level two threat that covers much of northeast Virginia, Washington, Philadelphia, even New York City included in that with a level one surrounding that, and a broad brush sort of level one that runs from southern Illinois back into Texas and Oklahoma and then northward along the uh, high plains. And, um, you know, definitely these thunderstorms storms here are the best organized for sure. If we look at uh, NATO cast, it actually does put a little bit of a risk there in Illinois along some of those developing thunderstorms in the uh, marginal risk area. Also, strangely enough, up there around in northern Wisconsin between the border of UP and Wisconsin. If we look at the wind version of NATO cast, and they run wind and hail, they're putting a pretty high probability, including a uh, greater than 10% chance of a 65 knot wind or greater in this hatched area here that runs from southern New Jersey back to uh, Maryland and does include Washington, D.C., if we take a look at the uh, HRRR simulated radar through tomorrow morning, Eastern Daylight Time, 7 a.m., you'll see these thunderstorms pretty organized here. There's a frontal zone right in through here that's helping aid the development of these showers and storms. Um, and as the loop continues you and re resets, uh, you can see how it moves across Delaware, parts of southern uh, New Jersey here uh, over the next uh, roughly 12 hours or so. And then for Wednesday, still some severe storms expected in about that same area, a stalled front in this case, uh, a little bit further south to around Charlotte, and then a secondary area develops around the uh, North South Dakota area, and some storms even lingering back into uh, Kansas, maybe even including Kansas City on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, that area shifts and grows in intensity a little bit. Whenever they do a, a slight risk, which is two, at uh, what they think is day three. So today is day one, Wednesday, day two, Thursday, day three. So that's actually fairly significant uh, for summertime. And that's actually fairly far south, just placed fairly uh, far to the south, actually, for this time of year, getting almost into mid-July now. And if we look even uh, um, more out into the distance here, July 15th through the 21st, you see the uh, severe weather or supercell, you really should say, composite outlook for the entire week. It does show clusters of storms up here in Canada and the coast where I would expect them this time of year. But interestingly, uh, from Nebraska and Kansas all the way down to portions of old Mexico. So to me, the, the interpretation of that in the long range models is that we're getting more moisture flow up through here, leading to maybe some more unstable air. Let's take a look at the U.S. here. Uh, this is the visible satellite loop. Always interesting to watch in the summer. We'll zoom in on a couple of these areas. Here's what's left of uh, Chantal uh, as it moves off into the open waters of the North Atlantic. We have high cirrus clouds over Illinois, but also a couple of thunderstorms developing in central Illinois. There's the main zone of activity there in the northeast. Luckily, it's dried out in central Texas, but storms are still brewing uh, down in coastal areas and even uh, maybe as close as uh, around Wake go. Um, now, if we switch gears, and in the west, we see just a circulation of thunderstorms there. We'll zoom in on some of these areas here in a minute, but here's the 500 millibar flow. We actually have a fairly decent trough of low pressure at 500 millibars for this time of year uh, that stretches from Lake Superior all the way down through Missouri and into maybe North Texas, a little bit of lobe down there into the uh, Gulf of Mexico as well. Big high aloft uh, with circulation around that and hot temperatures to go with that. Let's look at the surface map that goes with that. So we have a little weak area of low pressure in Wisconsin with a warm front, cold front connection that you typically see. Maybe the reason why there's a little bit of a tornado probability up there because there's actually a low that could actually 
<laughs> favor low-level winds to actually produce enough spin in the lower part of the thunderstorm to do something. Uh, but a little bubble of high pressure moving into the northern plains. There's that cool front. It's arriving just in time. You'll see the hot temperature forecast here in a minute. Let's take a look at some regional satellite views. There's Chantal moving off the sea. Uh, showers and thunderstorms forming uh, in uh, Connecticut and also uh, portions of Massachusetts and Rhode Island. You can see by the bubbly tops that the more in intense storms are down here uh, running from just uh, in eastern Pennsylvania down into Virginia. It's pretty active thunderstorms also in Illinois and parts of Missouri, and I can attest that. We just had a wind gust outside my door here. In the west, southwest, we see mountain storms forming over graphic lift here, but generally speaking, these are pretty widely scattered, and it is hot, and we'll show you the temperatures down there in uh, Arizona here in a minute. But first, let's talk about where the heavy rain hazard is for the remainder of today, Tuesday. Uh, this area corridor up here where you saw all the showers and storms, there's at least a 15% chance of a heavy rain hazard. Also, you already saw these storms forming here uh, from central Illinois down through the heart of southern Missouri and covering much of Arkansas. There is a flash flood watch in effect actually a flood watch in effect, all the way from just around Boston, straight through Connecticut, all the coastal areas down to Washington, including Delaware, and in fact, ending up around Greensboro and uh, in between Raleigh and Charlotte. So that is for all the activity expected, not only today, but tomorrow as well. Took a radar snapshot here. Here's Little Rock, Arkansas here. This was late in the afternoon, just before five o'clock. You're seeing a, a, a smattering of showers and storms. These are not severe storms, really. There might be one or two that produces a gust of wind or maybe some small hail, but primarily these are still heavy rain producers, slow movement, and also high precipitable water values. So here's what the model uh, says that looks like around now. Still pretty high values there in Arkansas down into Texas. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to rain. It just means any rain that forms will be very efficient. And you also see a lot of the high precipitable water values are actually offshore, uh, but still enough in that area where the rains are expected. In fact, if we take a closer look at some of these areas, this is total precipitation. Now, this is for the next five days. Now, keep in mind that I don't expect it to rain continuously for the next five days. In fact, if you really look at the details of this was Wisconsin, Minnesota, and increasingly Iowa threat for heavier rain. It's actually leaning a little bit toward the last two of those five days. So it's actually a weekend rain that we're talking about there. Now, it's a little bit different story here. If I switch to the weather service forecast for rainfall, it is over the next five days. This actually leans more toward what's occurring over the next couple of days. So we see some two, three inch totals. The yellow areas are four. So much of North Carolina, Virginia, Delaware, Maryland, up into parts of New Jersey, expecting some pretty heavy rains. And this is verified by the heavy rain hazard for Wednesday, tomorrow, that slight risk area out here where you would expect it. Maybe a little bit in some of these other areas of green, but pretty marginal. And then on Thursday, as you would expect, again, toward the latter part of that five-day forecast, we're starting to get that threat, get into Iowa where you saw those heavier totals, and also down from Charlotte up to around a Richmond, Virginia. Heat advisories are in effect. Now the front's right here, but it's not coming in time here for the rest of today. So Boston, those same areas that are getting the rain are still getting the heat, which is amazing. The rain will change that. Uh, and there are also just a smattering of heat advisories. M the most organized is out in the interior of uh, Washington and also in eastern Montana. But a couple of the metropolitan areas like Denver, uh, off to the east of Phoenix, the Los Angeles area is a little bit hot. If we take a look at temperatures at 5 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, uh, we see 96 in Raleigh, 97 around Charlotte. Uh, but rain cool there in Washington at 70 six degrees and kind of cloudy cloud induced in new york it hasn't started raining there yet but 89 degrees we go out to the southwest this is at two o'clock uh pacific time and phoenix at 108 degrees and las vegas at 105 degrees and so pretty hot out there and that's that upper level ridge speaking there if we take a look at high temperatures for tomorrow wednesday we still see that uh, 90s are going to be common from New Jersey down through the coastal areas, central parts of uh, North Carolina, Virginia, all the way down into Georgia. And if we gaze our attention out here to the uh, Montana area, we see um, Salt Lake City will be up to 100 tomorrow. 
and many of the locations in Montana will be exceeding uh, that triple digit figure as well. And look at some of the hot temperatures uh, forecast for southern parts of uh, Arizona tomorrow with temperatures above 110, about 110 to 115 in that area. Here's the general temperature trend for the country, though. And uh, so this is for Wednesday tomorrow. And refer to the color coding here. So if it's a green or blue or color, it's a below normal reading by these many degrees here. And if it's a dark red, that's especially warm for this time of year. It's not the actual temperature forecast, it's a departure from normal. Uh, so in other words, they're hotter than they think they should be pretty much in Montana and cooler than is probably expected in for July and in places like Arkansas and much of Texas. But the actual numbers are the high temperatures forecast by the Weather Service for the individual cities. So 84 in Chicago in the middle of July, not too bad. Uh, but there's some of that hot air in uh, the Phoenix area and up in Montana, a couple of triple digit days expected uh, on uh, Wednesday and then on Friday, a complete reversal as the jet stream starts to act and shows high temperature departures much below normal. So a big swing in temperatures from 100 degree readings to only 70s in parts of Montana. Southwest pretty much stays hot and then it does moderate somewhat in the central and eastern U.S. And then going ahead to Sunday, once again, we see high temperatures that are very cool for this time of year. Much of this is the result of cloud cover and rain that's expected in that area. But it's also a lack of, um, so when you see the below normal, you know, it's also a lack of an upper level high pressure zone that would support uh, traditionally days and days of hot weather you might expect in uh, the month of July. So here's that mean. That's the EPS, that's the Euro model's uh, seven-day mean of 500 millibar. And you see the hot air is definitely confined to the southwestern U.S. and maybe parts of Florida. And this little dip in the jet stream doesn't seem that significant here, but slightly below normal um, heights is what they're called, but we'll just call it pressure. Um, in here, it's enough to keep things at least at or maybe slightly below normal. Dew points are running high again in Texas. That's not good because anything that triggers that would be pretty efficient probably at making rain as far as temperatures are concerned beyond what i just talked about so sunday this coming sunday through thursday of next week uh it actually uh is still below normal in texas and in through much of the great plains but getting hotter out west and shifting north a little bit northeast hot so it's a typical pattern where you have a, a high pressure ridge here a little bit of troughing and some rain and thunderstorms here and then another high pressure ridge right here and if we take a one last graphic the precipitation through that same period not a high probability of uh, confidence in above normal but if it's going to be wet anywhere it'll be in west texas and that's where the drought conditions are worse. We don't need it to rain much more, of course, where the tragedy of the flooding occurred in central Texas. Uh, but these areas could use some, and on the southeastern coast as well. And let's take a look at the tropics. Uh, the final thing we'll do is take a look at the tropics, and I haven't seen this yet, uh, both in the Atlantic for the next seven days and in the Pacific, no activity. So here's the uh, probability of a 60% of probability of an above more normal hurricane season. We've gone through already three names. The most recent was Chantal, and then Dexter would be the next storm. But as you saw, there doesn't seem to be much hope of a, ne of a name storm in the next week. And like I said, out in the uh, eastern Pacific, no tropical cyclone activity expected there either. Thanks for watching this edition of Weather to Watch. It comes out every other day or as the weather necessitates. Please remember to share this with your friends, subscribe to the channel, or at the very least, like what you just watched. Thanks.